All right, the world is watching as the countdown nears closer and begins for India's third lunar mission. All eyes and hopes are on the impending launch as billions wait with bated breath for Chandrayaan 3. But as the clock ticks away, in the background are genius minds at work who have strived for years to make India's missions to the moon come true. Here's a report. Take a look. The year is 2008. Indian Space Research Organization achieved a thumping feat of successfully launching the first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1. The mission provided valuable insight for 10 months before it ended prematurely. Chandrayaan-1 was groundbreaking in many aspects as it laid the foundation for all lunar missions that were to follow. Cut to the year 2019. The whole country watched the second lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, soar in the air. The orbiter successfully entered the lunar orbit, but weeks later, a billion hearts broke as Vikram Lander crashed on the moon's surface. But, as it is said, failures are the stepping stones to success. And so, four years since the second mission's failure to make a landing, ISRO is all geared up to launch Chandrayaan-3. Space scientists have focused on everything that could go wrong and ensured that this time they score a successful landing on the moon. While India's people are counting on the mission to be a success, even countries world over are watching the launch closely. Chandrayaan-3 is very important for not only for Israel but also for, for Japanese people because uh, we are going to have the uh, collaboration with Israel uh, based on the success of the uh, Chandrayaan-3. So uh, we are very much expecting to have the uh, successful launch and successful land landing on the moon of Chandrayaan-3. The stakes are high and even the ISRO chairman knows it. Chandrayaan-3 aims to make history by gently touching down near the moon's southernmost point, where no other spacecraft has ventured before. All previous missions have only explored the regions around the lunar equator. This ambitious project will open new horizons not only for the Indian space industry, but also pave the way for future exploration of the moon's hidden secret. All right, for a better understanding of the mission, we were earlier joined by Chris Hadfield from Ontario, Canada. He is a former commander of the International Space Station and author of the Apollo Murders. He had some very interesting insights explained in a beautiful manner. Listen into this. Well, it's got two main attractions. I mean, if, if you look at the moon, it turns once every two weeks. But if you're right at the South Pole or right at the North Pole, you always get sunlight. So that means you can have eternal power at the North Pole and the South Pole. So that's one reason. The other is the craters at the South Pole of the moon never get light in them. And by our best guess, there's about 400 billion liters of water in the craters of the moon. So if you have the combination of eternal power at the South Pole and deep reserves of water, then suddenly it's far more attractive for human life. And that's why so many space agencies are going to the moon. But so far, we've just landed uh, close to the equator, as you've been saying. So by landing all the way down at 70 degrees south, like Chandrayaan-3 is doing, that is one giant step closer to uh, robots and then people landing and then living and working at the South Pole of the Moon. It's, it's a really complex step, and, uh, and that step is going to begin later today. Well, you know, when, when you look up at the moon, you always see the same shape on the moon, you know, the same pattern. And various cultures have seen a rabbit or a face or all kinds of things in the, in the pattern on the moon. But it's always the same side of the moon that faces us. And if you think about that, the moon takes about a month to go around the world. And so that means that very slowly, in order to keep that face pointed at us, the moon is turning really slowly. And if you cut a month in half, that's about 14 days or so. And so that's why the moon only turns once completely relative to the sun every 14 days. So if you're somebody on the moon, we're here at 70 degrees south, 
then the moon is going to turn relative to the sun very slowly. You'll be in the sun for 14 days, and then you'll be in the shade for 14 days. And as you mentioned at the outset there, Him, it's, uh, it gets really incredibly cold and hard to keep uh, little spaceships alive on the surface for two weeks. So everything that is going to happen on Chandrayaan 3, once it lands at, in the third week of August there, has to happen in that two-week time when that part of the moon is in the bright sunshine and collect the solar energy and keep all those science experiments alive.